Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa. I'm the owner and artist here at the Top Drawer RVA located in Richmond, Virginia. I purchased these two end tables at a local online auction. I ended up getting them for less than $13. So let's take them and make them over with a little bit of paint. After a quick inspection, I decided on my color palette. I am going to stain the tops and paint the base. Then I looked a little closer and this is what I found on the top of my piece. That my friends is water damage. And water damage over top of particle board like that means it is going to keep expanding. So first off, I removed any of the broken and loose bits, leaving a big hole. That meant some Dixie Belle mud. I'm going to fill in the entire inset panel to cover it and then sand it back to flat. Don't worry, even though I have sanded this back to flat, I can still stain this wood. Today, we're gonna to talk all about how to get a faux wood grain on the top of your pieces, even with damages like that. So first off, let's clean our projects well with white lightning and get to work. Since the bases of this piece, these pieces, I should say, there's two. The bases of them are pine. When you have pine wood, you see those big knots in the style of graining. That means there could be possible bleed through on a project like this. So I will be prepping my pieces with two even coats of bonding boss in clear. What is Bonding Boss? Well, for those of you that don't know this Dixie Belle paint product, it is basically slick stick and boss combined in one. Painting on two even coats of this beautiful primer will allow me to paint without worry. It will give me a good grip for my project and you are ready for paint. All right, let's get to work. So how do you get a faux wood grain on top of a white damaged piece like this? I'm going to start off with Dixie Belle's Mud Puddle. This is a very neutral brown. Paint on one even coat of this beautiful brown to the tops of your project. Then you're gonna grab your gel stain. This is Voodoo Gel Stain, it's water-based. I'm going to be using Tobacco Road and Black Magic for this project. You are also going to need this wood graining tool. Now I'm gonna tell you a little secret. I've never used it before. <laughs> I've never used this product in my million years of furniture painting. So we're gonna try it together today here on this video. So this wood graining tool is like a silicone squishy material and you take it and drag it along the top of your project while your paint or stain is still wet. So what I'm going to do is mix even parts of Voodoo Gel Stain and Tobacco Road and Black Magic and mix together. The reason I'm choosing to mix these two colors together is I feel that either too brown or too black is not going to look natural enough. So we're going to get a in-between color and lay this down fairly thickly over top of the mud puddle. So since this is a water-based stain, it stays pretty liquidy, pretty wet on top of your paint until it gets dry. So the plan is lay it down fairly thick and then drag the graining tool across. I'm gonna start on one end and again, bear with me, first timer here, I've never used this product before. I'm going to work in sections to see if it looks right, number one, but to make it work the way that I want it, kind of like in wood panels. So you take the little tool and you drag it back and forth. You can see me here pulling it across the stain. It's going to keep that stain on the top, then also show you the color underneath, which is mud puddle. Okay, so I did it. Let's look at it. I feel like I kind of went heavy handed, so I'm gonna wet it down, wipe it off, and start again. So this time I'm going to do the same thing, apply that thick Voodoo gel stain, but I'm gonna be a little more gentle with my wood graining tool. When I pull it across, I'm going to rock it back and forth, but also keep my hand a little bit lighter. You can see here that it's less defined. It's a little bit less garish and harsh. So you can kind of overlap the sections as you go along. The plan is to keep it in one direction though. I want the wood grain to look as authentic as possible. So I'm going to overlap my sections just a touch. Remember this is Voodoo Gel Stain, it's super kind of wet and liquidy. It's not really gonna dry fast, so you're able to have some working time as you're dragging that tool over. Also, I kind of learned as I went along that you can wipe it off and then go over the same section if you're not loving the wood grain. 
I do recommend to pull it and rock it in different directions maybe next time. For this project, I went all in one direction and then I had a follower give me a handy tip that, hey, if you go the opposite way every other, it's gonna look even better. Don't forget to wipe it off in between the pulls of creating your faux wood grain. The product gets kind of stuck up into the little comb part of the tool and it will lead to a little bit of bleeding on the edges I find if you don't wipe it off in between each section. So would I recommend jumping in and trying something for the very first time on the top of a table or an end table, whatever you're working on? Probably not, but that's usually the way I roll. I tend to actually do things live on a first timer basis to just kind of jump right in and get my hands wet. So try this on a board maybe before you begin or practice and then spray it with water, wipe it off and try again until you get it exactly the way that you like. Another thing to remember is that Voodoo Gel Stain is gonna dry a little bit darker than it looks when it's wet. The black magic, especially like the black magic itself looks a little bit more gray in the bottle than when it dries, it dries completely black. So know that what you're putting here on top of the table is going to dry a little bit darker than what it looks like when you just finish it. You could also change the head on the wood graining tool by using the smaller piece for your edges, but I found that it worked perfectly fine coming in and dragging along the curved edge to create that faux wood grain. Here is where we are at when the project is dry. So this is dry Voodoo Gel Stain. Don't worry, it looks a little garish. We're going to give it a little bit of warmth with some golden ash no paint gel stain. Now remember this no paint gel stain is oil based so wear a glove when you apply it. I'm going to use my applicator pad and work in sections to pull this color right over top of the hard work that we did. Remembering that the base is completely dry before you come in with your gel stain you don't want your voodoo gel stain to move at all. For this part of the project, I wiped on one even coat and then I came back in and added almost like a half coat. I didn't do two full coats. I really wanted to still see that wood underneath, but I really feel like using the oil-based gel stain over top of the faux grain tool is what makes it look real. Without this part, the wood just didn't look the right color. You also need to remember that this oil-based product could take up to three days to completely dry. It depends how thick you lay it out, but the thicker you lay down your gel stain, the longer it's going to take to harden up and cure. This is where I got really excited because I actually love the way that it looks. You can hardly tell that it's fake wood, and I think that it looks a little bit more rustic than that original pine would have actually stained up, so I am 100% happy. The only thing is, I have to do the other one exactly the same. While my gel stain gets dry, I'm going to come in and paint the bases. We are going to keep this simple and we're going to keep this easy. So I'm going to use my Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint. Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint has a built-in top coat and a built-in primer. So this makes my painting job super duper easy. If you can get two even coats down in one day, then you're done and you just walk away. There's no need to seal your silk paint with the built-in top coat and built-in primer. When you're done painting, you're done. You can just walk away. The color that I've chosen for today's project is a little bit more of a masculine color. I feel like these end tables look a little bit more boyish than girlish. So I'm going to do two even coats of Acadia. Acadia is one of the newer silk paint colors. It's from the National Park palette and it's a really beautiful green. Look at the coverage I'm getting right here with just one even coat. It's nuts. And I feel like I have to drop this in here somewhere because every single time I paint a piece of furniture with the drawers inside, somebody always comments, why don't you take the drawers out? It would be so much easier. Uh-huh, it would be easier if they came out. <laughs> this is a newer modern set of Broyhill end tables and there is a safety latch at the back so these drawers do not come all the way out. I think they do that for a tipping hazard. 
So if you've never used silk paint before, now you know the handy dandy tips are basically clean, scuff sand your project or use bonding boss, then come in with a smooth synthetic brush and paint on two even coats, waiting approximately two to four hours in between coats of paint. Now that it has been a couple of days, I can come in here and apply my gator hide to the tops of these projects. Remember the base I can leave as is, it has a built-in top coat. But for the top part where we did the faux wood grain, I'm going to be sealing them with gator hide. Gator hide is Dixie Belle's toughest top coat. You are going to apply it with a overlapping stroke onto the top of your project using a blue sponge. I like to wet my sponge a little bit, get it a little damp before I begin. It just gives that gator hide a little bit more mobility when you're sliding it on from left to right. I do like to overlap my strokes just a tiny bit and I ended up adding two even coats of gator hide to the tops of these projects. So wipe on, keep it in one direction if that helps you, overlap your strokes and then when that dries add your second coat and you are good to go. While we wait for this gator hide to get dry, I am going to head to the happiest place on earth, which is my local Hobby Lobby. I love Hobby Lobby for hardware on my projects. The price is always right and we're going to see if it's half off and I was lucky enough this week it was. I shop my local Hobby Lobby here in Richmond, Virginia, but you can also get Hobby Lobby knobs online. The first ones that I looked at were a beautiful white stone and I considered them heavily until I realized the white might contrast too much with the green. So I'm going to look for something a little bit more burnished and gold and these little guys at five bucks and half off, they were a total win. They also have some beautiful cast iron that I considered and they had some gorgeous drop pulls as well. These were glass and they're only $3.50. I ended up purchasing four of those beautiful burnished gold hardware pieces for my project and then these little guys were done. What do you think of the tops of these pieces? I actually like the faux wood grain tool better than I probably would have liked me just putting regular stain on. I think that it gives you more variations in the faux wood and gives you a more rustic look. I love the color of golden ash in the gel stain that I put on top. I think it gives it a little bit more warmth and it combines beautifully with the silk paint that I put on the base. It's kind of the perfect combination of dark stain with dark paint and then the gold knobs just really pop. I love this whole entire look and I am fairly confident that when I take them to my booth space here at the Lazy Daisy in Richmond, Virginia, I will be able to sell them quickly. I think they look perfect. Thanks for joining me on my painting journey. I'd love to see if you tried that wood grain tool as well. Send me a picture.